This podcast is being brought to you by WXAV 88.3 FM and WXAV.com. WXAV, bringing the best podcasts to you. Hi, I'm Peter Creighton, and welcome to this very special WXAV interview. Kristong Kingfish Ingram has become the defining voice of the blues in the 21st century. Rolling Stone has called Kingfish, quote, one of the most exciting young guitarists in years, with a sound that encompasses B.B. King, Jimi Hendrix, and Prince. Kingfish is currently on tour, and I was able to catch up with him to discuss his new album, 662. We also discussed how he developed his playing technique and his view on the current state of the blues. Here now, my interview with Kriston Kingfish Ingram. So my first question I have for you is, uh, you're currently on tour, the Juke Joint Live Tour. How's the tour been so far, and how does it feel to be on the road again playing in front of audiences? Oh, man, so far so good, man. The tour has been amazing. Uh, we hit up Florida, different parts of North Carolina, just all through the uh, East Coast next. Uh, we're in Minnesota tonight. Everything's been amazing, man. We're just, uh, we're just like, you know, just happy to be back and playing in front of people. <laughs> yeah, I bet, because that's where the energy comes from and everything. Right, right, right. And we need that energy to feed off. So, yeah, most definitely. Awesome. Uh, the new album is called 662. And it's incredible. It's so good. And it's a really, really personal record for you. Um, what has it been like for you to really kind of put yourself out there and share a different side of yourself with the public on this album? Well, for me, it was, um, it was, it was, it was kind of like a sigh of relief because I've been wanting people to, you know, hear that more personal side of me for like the longest because, you know, that's all the blues is. The blues is your life. You can't sing about anyone else's. You know, for so long you can get away with that, but it comes a time at the point you need to tell your story. So I just had some things that I had been through in the last two years that I just wanted people to know about. And uh, that's when uh, that's when 662 was born. Now, one of the, the really great st uh, standout tracks on this album, it's called Not Going to Lie. And you have this great lyric in it. It goes, got to keep it going. I promise, buddy guy. That's incredible. Can, can you kind of share a little, a little bit about how that lyric came about? And what's the responsibility like for you kind of carrying on the, res the responsibility of, of what buddy guy wants? Well, uh, first, I'd just like to say, uh, Mr. Guy has been an uh, incredible mentor and, um, and uh, inspiration to my career. You know, he helped me out with my first record and, and, and uh, uh, gave me an opportunity to go on the road with him. So uh, he's been, a, been an incredible part of my journey. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be here in certain spots because of some uh, because of the, because of certain things that he did. And um, I feel like I just have a place as one of the young um one of the young people that's, uh, you know, that's, that's doing this journey today and just trying to, you know, uh, keep up his legacy and, and his, you know, what can I say, you know, his history or whatever, because I, because I was really inspired by him as a child, like from his style and whatnot. And it's not too many people like doing his style, you know, playing the crazy wild, you know, blue style these days. So I feel like that's a very important, you know, piece. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And you, you kind of brushed on your style. Um, you have an incredible style when you're playing the guitar. I mean, you you have really fast fingers and you fly along the fretboard, but yet you're able to create just these incredibly beautiful melodies as you're playing. How did you go and develop this technique that you got? Oh, uh, thank you. Well, uh, I was very into the, 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 you know, the shredding players, you know, uh, you know, uh, guys like Eric Johnson and, and well, let, okay, let me say the, the guys who shred but still have soul, you know, guys like Eric Johnson and Eric Gales and uh, my, my, my boy down in Texas, Lance Lopez, Blues Rock Titan, just, just you know, just players of that long level. So I studied those players a lot when I was young and incorporating that along with the, you know, uh, slow hand guys like, every, you know, uh, Eric King and B.B. King and Freddie King, I just intertwined the two and was able to create my own lane, you know. That's incredible. And it, there, there's no one out there that sounds like you. So it's really cool how you oh, thank you. <laughs> no, man, it's 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 so awesome and everything. And it's it's great because working at a, a college station and playing your music to to college students now, they're getting into the blues because it's it's you're speaking their language, you're speaking their speed because you're one of them. 
Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's what I try to do. I try to, I try to put some urban feel of some sort into my blues to grasp them, and then once they're in, we can teach them about the real world thing. Yeah, totally. Now, uh, Kingfish, you're coming to Chicago this Sunday. You're playing the Vic Theater. I mean, obviously, playing Chicago, that's got to be a pretty cool deal for you because the the blues history here in this city is just absolutely incredible. Uh, what's it like for you when, when you play Chicago? Man, I have a fun time every time we come to Chi-Town. I have a... I have a broad respect, you know, for like the, you know, Chicago blues community there. I know, um, I know a bunch of players in that, you know, in that area. So I, 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 call, I used to call Chicago like a second home when I first went because I just fell so much in love with the community, you know, you know, uh, in the blues and the camaraderie that, uh, uh, that Chicago has. So yeah, man, just to come back and just to play in, uh, you know, this, you know, historical blues area, you know, it's just amazing, you know, it's it just an amazing feeling. So for sure, for sure. That's awesome. Um, and you're also playing the Apollo Theater on Thursday, March 31st. I mean, that's got to be an incredible feeling, too, playing such a historic uh, theater in New York. Right, right. I was surprised when I saw the schedule and saw that we was uh, you know, pretty much booked for it. I, I was kind of surprised when we got it. So, yeah, man, I, I'm, 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 just, I'm just grateful to be, you know, like pretty much making memories and just, you know, uh, bringing the music to the masses out here. That's awesome. What would you say is the biggest misconception that the blues is facing right now in 2022? Uh, that uh, there are no young black kids into our planet. You know, you know, for years I've, I've had to, you know, go through people saying that, you know, kids that are my age, you know, and, you know, and that looks like me, you know, they're only into what's urban, you know, what's modern, like rap and hip hop or R&B or pop or whatever. But I think, I think uh, I'm, you know, and I say this in the most humble, you know, form, but I think myself, along with a host of others at the moment, are showing, you know, that that misconception is uh, wrong. So, you know, we're showing that there's young black kids and, you know, and young kids of all that's into, you know, this type of music. So, yeah. Uh, final question for you. If you're going to recommend any uh, blues artists or blues albums that people need to check out and listen to them on vinyl, because outside of the radio, listening to something on vinyl is like the best way to listen to music. What would you recommend people check out that it's like this is the one album you have to hear on vinyl? Uh, well, I'm kind of well, I'm kind of ashamed to say I don't I don't know. uh I don't know that many albums <laughs> in the blues realm, but I do know tons of great guitars. I studied like Arabic Collins, Sun House, uh, Robert Johnson, Elmo James, uh, Little Milton, uh, BB Freddie. And this goes on and on. These are the guys who I love and I listen to. That's awesome. Uh, Kingfish, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day today to talk to me. I really, truly appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate the opportunity. See you soon. And that was my interview with Kristong Kingfish Ingram. For more information, please visit kristongkingfishingram.com. Special thanks to Matt LaFollette at Alligator Records for arranging this interview. This interview was also co-produced by Dante Potata. I'm Peter Creighton, and thanks for listening. Thank you very much for listening to this WXAV 88.3 FM podcast. Be sure to visit our website, wxav.com, for more information on your escape from ordinary radio.